All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord have made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for tuning in in the back. You all with Pastor Perryman. Hey, today is a beautiful day. It's a lovely day. It's an exciting day. Shout out to you guys and thank you so much for tuning in uh, this morning. I appreciate you so very much. Shout out to our Instagram audience, our Facebook live audience. Shout out to my wife, Pastor Sophia, who's the first one on this morning. Shout out to Miss Karen Yates, who's on this morning. Miss Shannon Gooseby is rocking with us today. Byron Williams is with us today. Hey, my cousin Tonic Stacy Golden is on this morning. Hey, Bam is on. My daughter uh, Ashley Perryman is rocking with us today. My cousin Robert Perryman is with us this morning. Shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I appreciate you guys so much for tuning in. Listen, y'all do me a favor. Make sure you share, you like, you tag, you invite. Start a watch party. Let other people come on and be a part of it in the backyard with Pastor Perryman, all right? Shout out to Miss Jennifer Smith, who's rocking with us today. Miss Jennifer, it's Friday, boo. So I got to give you my pound because I know you be waiting on those Fridays. But look, it's raining outside, people. That's why we're back inside again today. It's raining again. But hey, nevertheless... Everything's still going to work out. Shout out to Miss Kelly Johnson, who's on today. Shout out to Ken Proctor, who's on today. Shout out to Miss Cherie Crocker this morning. You go, girl. Hey, shout out to Miss Burkett Perryman. You on this morning. Tony Johnson is rocking with us today. Thank you so much for being on. Miss Donetta Hines is with us. Miss Leno is with us this morning. Shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for coming in this morning, Miss Shirley Powell. I got to take a bow for Miss Shirley Powell because when royalty walks in the room, you must honor the royalty. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Benita Allen, who's Miss Allison, who's on Miss Sheila T. Roby. Girl, did you get a chance to rock those red bottoms yesterday? I know you did. <laughs> Good morning to y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Shout out to our Instagram audience this morning. We appreciate y'all. Listen, let me get some of this amazing coffee that my wife went made this morning. My wife won't even let me pick out my own cup in which I should drink from. Y'all pray for my wife and just let her and tell her that her husband does know how to pick some stuff out, but she won't even let me pick out nothing. You know, I just feel like she's just running me all the time. <laughs> Let me get some of this coffee. We're going to get to it. <laughs> maybe maybe that's the Belizean thing. I don't know. Maybe that's what that is. But anyway, let's get to it. You know, I really... Uh, shout out to Miss Thompson, who's on this morning. Good to see you. You know, I, I really wasn't going to do In the Backyard this morning. I actually told my wife after I came from Bible study, I'm a little tired. I want to rest. Maybe I'll just sleep in tomorrow and uh, not do Bible, not do the uh, broadcast in the morning or something. And she says, well, okay. So when I woke up this morning, I really didn't have a word prepared, so I woke up this morning and I didn't realize that I had woken up later than I normally do. And so when I woke up, the first thoughts in my head was, what do I say to the people? And immediately what was in my spirit, what immediately I felt like it was a download in my spirit, was to be able to tell the people that his grace is sufficient for us. I can't tell you that in the midst of this crisis, how disappointed I have become. I got to be honest, how disappointed I have become. Not at the world, but at the church, uh, because church people are in a panic. Church people are thrown in the towel in this season. Church people are not standing and being what, they claim to be. We're watching people not plead the blood anymore. We're watching people who have jumped, jerk, jiggle, and shouted, but who have not really believed the word. Do you not realize that the Bible says, in the day of adversity, it says, uh, if your, it says, in the day of adversity, your strength can be narrow. What does that mean? In other words, adversity tells the truth on you. It reveals to us how strong you really are. It reveals to us who you really are. If you really trust God, if you really believe God, it reveals that to us because adversity tells the truth on us. But as God is downloading into my spirit this morning about his grace, it's efficient enough for us. I thought about the Apostle Paul and how in, in, in second, 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 Chronicle, second Corinthians, I'm sorry, how he was dealing with this situation. Now, Paul now has been transformed on the Damascus Road. He's on fire for Christ. He's going out and he's preaching and teaching the gospel. But Paul makes this statement that he was caught up to the third heaven. And he's seeing things that is unlawful for him to even talk about. 
Paul done went past the sky. He done went past the stars. But now he's in the domain of God. And he's seeing things and hearing things that Paul says, I don't even know how to articulate. I don't even know how to describe. It, it's unlawful for me to utter. But then all of a sudden, Paul comes back to reality. And then every time he goes somewhere, he says that this thorn, this messenger of Satan was sent to buffet him. Paul is in a state of confusion and a state of chaos everywhere he goes. He cannot seem to shake. He can't overcome it. And so here's what he does. In the midst of this chaos, in the midst of this confusion, in the midst of the devil attacking everything that is taking place in his life, all of a sudden, Paul is on his face before God and He's crying out to God and God reveals to him that my grace is sufficient enough for you. I really think that we don't, as Christians or as people, really know about the grace of God. We've heard of it as being the unmerited favor of God. We've heard about it as being something that we shout about in church, that we jump about. Oh, thank you, Lord. Unmerited favor. Something I don't deserve. I'm going to I got the grace of God on me. But we don't tap in it or go deeper in this to understand that the grace of God is more than something you don't earn. It's more than the unmerited favor of God. But it is really God's strength making you perfect in the midst of the weakness, in the midst of the trials and tribulation that you're going through. So watch this now. You and I have this grace on the inside of us. And so that means no matter what situation befalls us, no matter how many coronaviruses are being released into this world by the devil, no matter how many Ebola virus or any of these things are being released in the, in the earth, we must understand that God's grace is sufficient enough for us. But watch this now. It's in the midst of this situation that Paul now is driven to his knees. Mm. It, it, it would seem as if Paul would have started to get counsel from this person or counsel from that person. How should I handle this? What should I do about this? But Paul doesn't go looking for other people to help him. What he does is he falls on his face before God. And that's what's most important. See, epidemics and crises may seem to have a, 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 a downside to it. But you have to understand that for every Christian, it's always an upside to this. Okay. But what do you mean, Pastor, there's an upside to this? The upside to this is that there will be glory after this situation. The upside to this is that there will be promotion after this. The upside to this is that there will be a new relationship that you will have with God. Paul is driven to his knees to pray and to seek the face of God. And now, all of a sudden now, he hears from God something that he never thought that he would hear. He thought that God would remove the situation. How many of you have prayed today and and prayed about your situation, and it seems as if God did not remove it. He didn't remove this. I got a bad doctor's report. He didn't remove this. I've been felt I have guilt and shame and condemnation on me. He didn't remove this. And there's a reason that he didn't remove it. It is not because he doesn't love you. It's not because he didn't care for you. It's not because he's not there for you. It is because he's showing you a new side of him that his grace is sufficient, sufficient enough for you that his grace is going to carry you through this situation. His grace is going to introduce you to him on a whole other level. His grace is going to turn things around for you. But watch now, but it's driving you to a place where you have to pray. The Bible said that my people who are called by my name, who will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. And then God says, then I will hear from heaven. Something happens. When the church falls on its knees and begins to pray in the midst of a troubled situation, the Bible said things have to shift. Things have to stop when the church begins to pray. The Bible tells the story that here the people are praying because Peter is in jail. Peter is put in jail unjustly, but all of a sudden when the church people come together and the church people begin to pray, something supernaturally happened. The Bible says while Peter is locked up in jail, he's shackled in jail all of a sudden now. The Bible said these doors are open. His shackles are, are loosed off of him. And now Peter is thinking that he's in a dream. But he doesn't realize it's an angel now who's walking him out of the prisons. Can you imagine now all of these guards are in the prison? Can you imagine all of these guards at Parchment? Can you imagine all these guards at Chino? Can you imagine all of these guards and all of these places and all of these prison systems that you know? And all of a sudden, here the angel shows up and... He walks Peter in the midst of them, through the midst of all of these people, and he walked him out. Peter's thinking he's in a dream. He thinks he's dreaming, but he doesn't realize he's not dreaming until he gets outside of the prison. And all of a sudden now, he turns and realizes, man, I'm not in prison no more. So guess what he does? He goes to the house where the people are praying for him. 
The Bible says he's knocking on the door and these people are having the prayer meeting, praying for him, knocking on the door and Rhoda comes to the door and Rhoda sees that it's Peter. And so here's what she does. She, she is so excited to the point that she don't even let Peter in. She runs back and tells everybody else, I just seen Peter. He's at the door. And the people are saying, no, you, you didn't see him. That's probably his ghost. He's probably been executed. That's his ghost. She's like, no, no, no. He's at the door. And then when they go to the door, they see that what they've been praying for has just now showed up. Because sometimes God will allow you to go through some things in life to drive you to him. When the church prays, supernatural things take place. Don't you abandon prayer in the midst of this situation, in the midst of this storm, in the midst of this rain. Don't you let panic dominate your life. I'm watching Christian people let panic dominate them. Well, I don't know, Pastor. I don't go to church on Sunday. I can't do this. I can't do that. But you're the first one at church. You're the first one at work on Monday. Don't you let the devil rob you of a relationship that you know you should have. Go, to, go on your face before God. Get down on your face. Start pleading the blood of Jesus over your life and over your family. Everything I touch is covered by the blood. My car is covered. My children is covered. My house is covered. My job is covered. We have to plead the blood because God's grace is sufficient enough for me. It's more than enough. It's more than enough. And, and, and I'm watching people who are magnifying the issues all on television and magnifying it all on social media. I'm watching people make jokes about this stuff and you're not realizing that your mouth gives birth to things that you may not want to see. That you're going to have to learn now in the face of adversity not to speak negativity, even though you're joking. You got to get this. Your mind, your body has been designed by God to produce what it is you say. So watch now. Your words are so powerful that whatever you say, whatever you think, whatever you think, the words will come out of your mouth and you will create that atmosphere. So I wonder how many people are creating this atmosphere, are creating a ram of fear in their life because of what you heard on television and what you were seeing on television and they're magnifying the epidemic, and now everything is shutting down. Oh, my God, what are we going to do? How are we going to get food? How are we going to get water? Where are we going to get tissue from? And you in our, in our neighborhood, the lines are wrapped around the corner trying to get this and trying to get that, and you're looking at people like nobody trusts him. Nobody give him glory. Nobody gives him praise. Nobody. Nobody does. Nobody in the midst of all of this. And so here I am, and I'm realizing his grace is sufficient enough for me. The Bible tells me that he would keep me in the midst of all trials and tribulations. If he said that he would keep us, guess what he would do? He would keep you just like he said, but guess what he needs you to do? He needs you to believe and he needs you to trust in him. He needs you to do this. I'm looking at the massive amount of people who will end up not having a job because of all of this. And I'm wondering how many people will lose their home. I'm wondering how many people will lose their cars. I wonder how many people will not be able to go to the hospital and get the doctor, get 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 tested like they need because they don't have the health care insurance anymore. I'm wondering, and I'm looking at this thing, but then I come back to the realization that God is my doctor. He's my lawyer. God, God is my provider. He's the one who covers me. He's the one who keeps me. He's the one who cares for me. And when I'm on a bed of affliction, he's the one who raises me up. When I'm the one who's hungry and I'm, I'm, I'm in a dry and thirsty land, he's the one who provides for me. He be the one. He be the one. And I'm watching people magnify the issue more than they're magnifying God. The Bible says this. Jesus says it like this. He says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I wonder how many of you are lifting him up for real, for real in the midst of this crisis. I wonder you, how many of you this morning have come to the realization that his grace is sufficient for you. No matter what I'm dealing with today, his grace is more than enough. His grace is more than enough when I dropped the ball, when I failed, when I did some things that I should not have done, when I was out there wilding out and doing some crazy things that did not glorify him and magnify him. His grace was still sufficient for me. How do you know that, Pastor? Because I'm still alive today. I'm still here today. His grace is sufficient enough for me. He covered me. He cared for me. He kept me. He protected me when I couldn't do it for myself because his grace is sufficient for me. Paul goes along and says, in 2 Corinthians, he goes along and he talks about his grace is sufficient for me. So Paul starts to talk about that he glories now in tribulation. He glories in his infirmities. In a sense, Paul says, I thank God for the affliction that I had to deal with. 
I thank God for it because guess what it does? It, it taught Paul to appreciate God more and more and more in the midst of his storm and his rain. I wonder how many of you are in a position now to just give him praise and just to be grateful and to be thankful that he kept you in spite of it all. He kept you in spite of it all. Yes, somebody lost their life to it, but he kept you. Somebody else is not bouncing back from this, but he kept you. Somebody else's child didn't turn around or didn't come out of that situation and their mess, but guess what he did? He kept your child. You can't understand it. You can't figure it out. I don't know why he didn't keep yours, but he kept mine. I don't know why, but guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to magnify my God in the midst of the hell that I'm dealing with because his grace is sufficient enough for me. And I wonder how many people who are willing to just lift him up and magnify his name. When you look at 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 12, verse 7, and you look at it from the message translation, Paul makes this statement in the message translation. He says, because of the extravagance of the revolution, revelation, and so I wouldn't get big-headed. Paul said, listen, the thorn in the flesh was given to me so I wouldn't get big-headed. He says, it was, he says, I was given a gift of handicap to keep me in constant touch with my limitations. So watch now. A lot of times you go through things not because you are all, because you are bad, but sometimes you go through things so that God can remind you that you still have limitations, that you ain't really all of that, that you wouldn't have nothing had it not been for me. You wouldn't have what you have had it not been for me. You wouldn't be alive today had it not been for me. You wouldn't be promoted on the job had it not been for me. You wouldn't be a doctor. You wouldn't be a nurse. You wouldn't be a lawyer. You wouldn't be any of this had it not been for me. And I think many times we get to the point where we become too big-headed. Maybe America has become too big-headed and you have forgotten on the principles by which America was formed. And maybe we have forgotten that America was formed on the biblical truths of the word of God because the people made a decision that they wanted to glorify God and magnify God. And they said that this would be a place who would glorify God. But now all of a sudden things are shifting and changing. And maybe we're depending too much on the military like, like David did. David now in the Bible is depending more on his military. And all of a sudden he sends his generals out to number the people. And all of a sudden, he causes the plague to come up on the land because he's trusting in his soldiers. He's trusting in his military, but he's not trusting in God anymore. So now all of a sudden, God now allows the plague to take place and people are dying left and right. But in order for him to get out of this mess, in order for him to get the country out of this mess, he had to go sacrifice unto God. I came to tell you this morning that in order for you to get out of your situation, his grace is sufficient enough for you. But watch this now, but you're going to have to work the principle of God to keep yourself out of this. Paul, David has to go and go down to Ornan's house and get the threshing instruments. And, and Ornan says, I'm going to give it to you for free because you're the king. But here's what David says. He said, I'm not sacrificing that. I'm not sacrificing that unto God, which costs me nothing. So guess what he's doing? He's making a sacrifice. And the plague is stopped. So watch this now. The plague will come now your dwelling because of the blood. The plague will come now your dwelling because of the sacrifice that you made. There are many of you right now, you don't know how you're going to get your next meal now because maybe your job is shutting down. May I tell you that even in the midst of a famine, you can still eat. In the midst of a famine, you can still have lights. In the midst of a famine, things can still work for you. The Bible tells us why there was darkness in Egypt that was light in Goshen. Why was there light in Goshen? Because Goshen is the place where the Hebrew people were. I need you to get this, that if you just make a decision that I'm going to trust God in spite of it all, I'm going to make the necessary sacrifice and things are going to shift me. So watch now, sometimes God will allow things to take place so you can come back to the reality and to know that who he is. You can't get the big head in the midst of all of this. Watch what he says. He says, Satan's angel did his best to get me down. What in fact did was, what in fact he did was push me to my knees. No danger then of walking around high and mighty. At first, I didn't think of it as a gift and begged God to remove it. Three times I did that. And then he told me my grace is enough. It's all you need. My strength comes into its own in your weakness. Look at this. So you're trying to tell me that when I'm weak, the Bible said God says I'm strong because of not my strength, but because of his. I'm strong not because of what I know, not because of what I've been. I'm not strong because of what I know. And I'm not strong because of my education, but I'm strong because of him. So that means that in the midst of a chaotic situation, 
You can still stand strong. You can still stand firm because of who you know and who you know is Jesus Christ. His strength is made perfect in the midst of my weakness. What does that mean? His strength is made perfect in the midst of my weakness. In a sense, his strength matures me while I'm going through. <laughs> I know, I know for some of you like, what pastor? His strength matures me while I'm going through something. It matures me. What does it mean it matures me? It teaches me to forgive people who have hurt me and talk bad about me. His strength is made perfect in my weakness. It matures me. Why does it mature me, pastor? Because it teaches me to trust him when I never trusted him before. It teaches me to grow up now that I can't continue to keep doing the things that I did before. It teaches me. I learn to mature in the midst of my mess, in the midst of my storm and my rain, I learned how to be mature enough. Things shift and change when you are mature. Never forget, I was talking to a friend of mine. I said, man, I used to play basketball and play basketball all day long, man. I played basketball five days a week, man. Five days a week. I, it, was, it was religious for me. I was on the basketball court somewhere five days a week. Man, I could play seven or eight games, man, full court and not be tired at all. I said, man, my church had a picnic, man, a church outing uh, this past summer. I was out there on the basketball court, man. I said I was out there, brother, and all I did was inbound the ball, and I was tired. Just everything shifted, and everything changed, man, because I'm not the same anymore. And I had to realize, man, that if God don't keep me out here, I'm going to hurt something. I'm going to tap something. I'm going to mess me up. So watch this now. In the midst of your weakness, his strength is made perfect. It matured me to understand, bruh, you can't do what you used to do. You used to play all day long. You used to do, do your thing on the court. Now, you better hope that you don't even tweak nothing or injure nothing. Just get over there on the sideline and laugh at everybody else while they out there because I came to the realization that, listen, I'm mature enough to understand Reverend can't do this no more. See, watch now. See, in the midst of your going through, your thinking starts to shift. You miss that? Your thinking starts to shift. You start to realize that there are certain things that you cannot do anymore. It's because you are maturing. So guess what Reverend did? I went over there and sat on the side. I see these, these older people in our church trying to get on the basketball court. Pastor, you're not coming? I said, no, I'm not coming back out there, but I, I got my cell phone to dial 911 for any one of y'all who needs some help right now because I can see one of y'all hurting something and not being able to walk. You're not 25 no more. Come over here and sit next to Reverend and watch the young kids. Watch Jaleel and them be out there and get down. You stay right here. Get with me. And then, then eventually you see one walking like this. See, not mature enough. You're still thinking about yesterday. I understand his strength is made perfect in my weakness. It makes me change my thinking. I'm mature enough to know can't do that no more. <laughs> Let me hurry up with this stuff. <laughs> Paul says, at first, I didn't think of it as a gift. And beg God to remove it three times. And I did remove it three times. I did that. And then he told me, my grace is enough. It's all you need. My strength comes in its, into its own in your weakness. Once I heard that, I was glad to let it happen. Whoa. He said, once I heard God say he was, that my grace is sufficient enough for me, he said, here's what I did. I was grateful. I was glad to let it happen. He said, I was glad to let it happen. Well, what does that mean? Because God is showing out in the midst of all of this. God's showing out in the midst of all of this. Listen to this. What you can't control, God's got under control. What you, what you don't think you can handle, God has equipped you to handle. What you don't think that you can go through, God has equipped you to go through it. What you don't think that you would make it out of, God has empowered you to come through it. He's empowered you to come through it. His grace is enough for you. Don't panic in the midst of this storm. Don't throw in the towel in the midst of this storm. Don't be the people who, who are going crazy and forget that you got a God out there who can handle any epidemic. Don't forget that you got a God out there who can turn any situation around. Don't you forget that you got a God out there who knows what to do. When Egypt was entered into a famine, God gave Joseph a plan of action that would save his people. What was the plan of action? God started downloading dreams into him that would give him revelation and understanding as to how to save a people. But here's what God is doing. At day, he had started preparing him when he was a kid. See, some of you have been in preparation. God has prepared you. Since the beginning, since you were a kid, to handle a situation like this, you've been prepared for. 
He's given you a plan of action as to how to save your family, how to cover your family, how to keep your family, how to cover you, how to keep you. He's given you a plan, and many times we allow that plan to dissipate and to sit on the sideline because here we are, we're stressing out over an issue that has happened to us in our bodies. We're stressing out over an issue that is happening here in the earth. Listen at this. There is no issue that is above God. There's no issue that's above God. I need y'all to get this and I got to close with this. There's no issue that's above God. You might be saying, but pastor, this, 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 this coronavirus is, it's up there high. But last year it was Ebola. If you haven't noticed that since 2000, there's been some disease epidemic that has hit the country every year for the last 20 years. And guess what? You're still here. You ain't dead. You're still here. Guess what? Somebody you know is still here. They not dead. You're still here. And so here we are. We're panicking over an epidemic and you have forgotten the name, one of the names of God. The Bible calls God El Elyon. El Elyon means he's the most high God. That means God is higher than sickness. He's higher than disease. He's higher than the coronavirus. He's higher than Ebola. He's higher than any situation that you are dealing with. He's the most high God. He's the most high God. But the most high God has a place where you can run into and hide in him. Watch this now. Psalms 91 says it like this. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. He said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. He's my, he's my protection. He's my covering. So, so Moses is the writer of Psalms 91. He gives you a revelation that God is the most high God, but he also tells you that God is the almighty God. What does that mean? He's the most high God. There's nothing that is above him, but him being the almighty God, I mean, he's the God that protects and covers. He's the God that fights your battles. He's the God that stands firm for you. That's who he is. And I need people to just tap into that. Tap into that. He's El Elyon. He's the most high God, but he's also the mighty God. He's the one that covers. He's the one that keeps. And we got to tap into that in this season. His grace is sufficient for you. It's enough for you. It is, the, it is enough for you. Your business will not fail in this season. Listen to this. You will not lose your job in this season. You will not go without food and water. You will not go without. You will not lose your new house, whoever you own here. You just got a new house and you're trying to figure out how we're going to pay this. You will not lose it. You will not lose it. You will not die because no medication will be there because of this or because of that. You will not die. You will not lose anything. But what you will do in the midst of all of this, you will declare the works of the Lord. But those of you who are operating in fear right now, I command and demand the fear to be removed off of you now in Jesus' name. You will not give in to fear another day in your life. You will prosper and you will flourish in the midst of all of this. Things shall not be, things shall not remain the same in your life. You will come out of this. We will come through this. We will come out of this like pure gold. We will come out with a different relationship with God. We will magnify him like never before because God would have shown himself strong to us. So I need y'all not to panic. Don't panic because everybody else is panicking. Don't lose hope because everybody else is losing hope. Don't go crazy because everybody else is going crazy. The pastor, what I do now, the NBA is shut down. Let them shut down. They won't give you none of their money no way. You were paying to watch them. So now you just stay at home and watch each other. Have fun with each other. Pull out the Monopoly game and chill out with one another. Maybe God is driving people back to have a relationship with each other. Have we ever stopped to think about that? The family need to come back and have a relationship with each other. So don't you lose hope and lose your mind. Maybe God is in the midst of this causing you to save some money. Tell you nobody don't say anybody. Pastor, what? Maybe he's calling you to save some money in the midst of all of this. So don't you lose your mind and go crazy in the midst of all of this. God knows how to keep you. He's been doing it for years. He's been keeping nations before you were ever even born. What makes you think he's not going to keep you now? Just because somebody in the White House may be saying crazy stuff and doing dumb stuff does not mean that God is allowing those things to take place in your life. He's covering you. He's keeping you. You're not going to lose nothing in the midst of all of this. Matter of fact, you are going to gain. The plan that God gave Joseph was a plan that not only taught Joseph how to keep a country, but it made the country rich in the midst of crises. God's got something in store for you. His grace is enough. It's sufficient enough for you. We got to keep trusting him. My faith is in him. In the midst of this, this family, guess what Reverend is doing? Sowing every day. You know why? 
because you're not going to be able to rely on your job in the midst of this famine. You're not going to be able to rely on the government to come through for you. You're not going to be able to rely on that. What you're going to have to rely on is the principles of God working for you. I came to encourage you this morning. For those of you who do not know how you're going to get your next meal, for those who do not know how you're going to pay your bills and how you're going to do this and how you're going to do that, you need to start sowing seed in the midst of this famine. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 26 that Isaac was in a famine like the famine of his father's day. But the Bible says, but Isaac sold in that, sold a seed in that land. And in that famine, Isaac reaps a hundredfold. And the Bible says, and the Lord blessed him. So famine is not the reason that you will not prosper. You got to work the principles and God will show up in the midst of your famine situation. He will show up. You just got to work the principles. You got to tell the devil, devil, I ain't losing in this battle. I'm not losing at all. His grace is sufficient enough for me. It's sufficient for me. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep praising him. I'm going to keep working the principles. I'm going to keep giving. I'm going to keep growing. I'm going to keep being what God has called me to do. I'm not going to give up my lifestyle because everybody else is panicking. I just look at it now. This gives me an opportunity to be able to go somewhere I want to without having to worry about no lines. I'm covered by the blood. <laughs> That's enough for today. I pray you were blessed today. Shout out to our Instagram audience. Shout out to my boy Dorian is on today. Good to see you, my brother. Love you, man. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Appreciate you. Listen, shout out to those of you who are on Facebook Live today. Miss JL is rocking with us. Miss Byron Williams. By Miss Byron Williams. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry, man. Byron Williams is rocking with us today. <laughs> boy, that was off the chain. <laughs> Byron is rocking with us today. Miss Elisa Wolf is rocking with us today. Miss Juanita Carter is rocking with us today. Shout out to Evangelist Stevenson. She's rocking with us today. Good to see you this morning. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Miss Irene Holmes is with us. Miss Edna Powell is rocking with us today. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all so very much. And we just thank y'all for tuning in. I want to encourage y'all, keep the faith. Keep the faith in the midst of this. Keep the faith, all right? Keep the faith. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel, all right? Listen, I got to pray, but I'm then I'm giving somebody their day today. So don't go off. I'm praying, and I got to give somebody their day today, all right? So let me pray for you. Miss Stewart is on. I think I said good morning to Miss Stewart, I think. If I missed you, Miss Stewart, hey, I apologize, but you're still the bomb, girl, so good to see you today, all right? So let me pray. I'm praying today that you will trust God in the midst of this storm, all right? That you just trust him, all right? Shout out to Eric Coleman, who's on this morning, too. Good to see you, man. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person who's watching me today. I ask in Jesus' name, God, that you would just bless the people tremendously. For those who are in bondage to fear today, those who have been gripped by fear, I ask in Jesus' name, God, that you, Lord, would turn things around for them, that you would remove the spirit of fear, for you have said that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but you've given us love, power, and sound mind. And so, God, I thank you right now that our minds are sound, and I give you praise and glory for it today. Now, Father, I pray that you would help us to trust you like we've never trusted you before. Help us to continuously keep working the principles, God, that you have established in this earth. For, God, in the same way that you were with the Hebrew people, and you had the blood post, had them post the blood over the doors, and the deaf angel passed over, I plead the blood over every person who's watching me today. And, Lord, and I thank you that the death angel passes over our people today. Thank you, Lord, that not one of our people will be lost or even have the coronavirus. But I thank you that in the midst of all of this, they will give you glory and give you honor. I thank you, Lord, for blessing my town near the Beano, Mississippi. I thank you, Lord, for taking my town to a new level in you. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, God, for blessing the Delta and increasing the Delta today. But, God, I thank you for blessing the country of Belize. I thank you, Lord, for pouring your favor out on the country and adding to the country. And, Lord, I give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, got to give somebody their day today. Shout out to Miss Victoria Williams, who's on today. You know you the ball too, girl. All right, today is Miss Juanita Carter's day. It's Miss Juanita Carter's day. Whatever Miss Juanita Carter wants, she gets whatever she needs, gets supplied. It's her day today. Today is Ms. Evangelist Stevenson's day. Whatever she wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, gets supplied. Today is her day. It's also Ms. Kelly Johnson's day. Whatever she wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, gets supplied. Let me say this to Tony Johnson one more time. Whatever she wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, gets supplied. It is her day today. So show her some love. It's her day today. 
Also, it is Miss Crocker's day. Whatever Miss Crocker wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, get supplied. It's her day to day. <laughs> so y'all show them some love. It's their day. Whatever they want, they get. Whatever they need, get supplied. It's their day. Listen, y'all share this video. Uh, tag other people. Like this video. Start a watch party so other people can get blessed by it. We want to continue to keep praying today uh, at 6 p.m. Have a conference call with, uh, with, with leaders from my church today as we talk about the coronavirus and how we are handling that situation because we know people want to know how is your church handling this shit. We attend church and all of those type of things. So we'll be discussing that and talking about how we're handling it and how we're overcoming it, all right? So, hey, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Shout out to Miss Jamie Lynn. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. So listen, get your seat in the ground today. Get your seat in the ground today. Go to our website at kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seat in the ground. Get your seat in the ground. Shout out to Jonathan Clark. Good to see you, man. But listen, get your seat in the ground. Go to our website, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seat in the ground. All right. Uh, you can give your tithe, your offerings. Hey, if you're sowing uh, uh, um, because you're watching in the backyard, Hey, you can give toward the pastor's compensation or any way you want to give on there. It's, it's appreciated. Hey, but you can sow directly to me if you like. You can sow to the Cash App. The Cash App is the dollar sign, Pastor Perryman. Again, the Cash App is the dollar sign, Pastor Perryman. That's how my wife and I live. So, hey, get your seed in the ground. And I am declaring the thousand time blessing over you uh, every day. Matter of fact, I got up this morning. I was praying the thousand time blessing over you. Um, so listen, get your seed in the ground. Don't let the devil talk you out of your giving. Don't let him rob you of your seed sowing, all right? Get your seat in the ground and watch what God does for you, all right? Hey, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And thank y'all so much for tuning in. So again, do me a favor. Share this video. Tag it. Like it. Um, get other people to come on and watch in the backyard with Pastor Perry. But not only that, start a watch party so other people's lives can be blessed and transformed. All right? Hey, I love y'all. We'll see y'all again to, uh, Monday morning. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name. Hey, shout out to Alexis and Victoria this morning. Hey, Pastor, love you twins. All right, we'll see y'all again tomorrow. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Love y'all.